Hello and welcome to Sue Family Designs. Today I'm going to be um, showing you how I created this um, purple resin wave. But first of all I want to thank you all for everybody who commented on the previous video regarding the respirator camera. Uh, that seemed to have worked quite well and people it's been well received because they like to see what I can see. Um, which was my intention all along. I wanted you to be able to see what I could see because quite often when you're doing something you're thinking, oh, it's a shame you can't see what I'm doing here. So me adding the camera to the respirator seems to have worked well. And if I, as long as I use it um, in small doses in real time, then people are not generally getting seasick because obviously as you're wearing it, you're moving your head and it can then cause a few issues but I'm trying to keep that to a minimum so at least you can still see what I see and then it can, you can get in close to the details. Um, so what else have I got to tell you about? Yes, yeah, so the resin wave, um, I decided to go with a different colour than the blue because you see a lot of the blue waves and things and I wanted to experiment with some different colours. Now uh, for this one you can see I've done it more um, on an angle and what I, I've used for that is I've bought some of these um, polystyrene cones which I then wrapped in uh, painters tape so that it didn't stick to the resin although I do have the resin um, plastic on the resin to stop it from sticking but just in case anything oozes out or whatever I wrap that in tape and then it was placed inside to then um, mold the shape so that's what I did with that also I've um, taken it a little bit further so I've done the rolling of the resin and then you'll see that I added extra elements down here the next day so that it finished it off and also added some stones uh, some acrylic gems I should say in this area here to also add a bit of um, dimension I did, um, when it was on the table, you can see here that I poured some white and I blew it around with my heat gun and got some really nice lacing happening here. But when I turned it over to do this side, I don't know if you can see in the corner here, the, 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 the white resin just ended up as blobs throughout this section here and I didn't like it so what I've done was I poured when it was on the table you'll see that I pour more resin into this area um, in the still in the purple and then just added a little bit of white and blew that around in there to disguise that but it also helped finish off because the way the resin run it actually looked like it was flowing um, so it actually turned out okay in the end so if you do make a mistake it can show you that you can actually fix it and get um, nice results so if you've got a piece and you think oh it's not really working for me there are ways that you can fix it and make something else of it so don't throw them away just put them to one side you may well find a solution in one of my other videos on how to fix it so that's what this one this video is about coming up very soon afterwards because I poured the same colors and things I created this bowl so uh, some video uh, a video is coming up very soon on how I created this piece and again using the polystyrene um, triangle cones um, you can see that I've added a little bit of extra shape to that but that's in the next video also coming up is another video on um, a lava piece that I'm working on so that's going to be hopefully here very soon so so see, stay tuned for that one also so without further ado let's get into the video on how I made that resin wave okay so for this one um, rather than using the silicone mat I'm actually wanted to create a free form shape so what I'm using here is I've got a length of rope that I'm going to uh, cut to roughly the size that I want so just over um, oversize it you don't need to stick this down or anything like that just place it under your cellophane and in the shape that you want and so the good thing about using rope you can reuse it time and time again and create different shapes without having to purchase any silicone to make your geo, geo shapes or anything like that so this works quite well 
So for this project I've used, like I say, cellophane, but on the other bowl you'll see in the next video I used um, the cling wrap. Uh, so you so that you can use different um, elements and get the desired result that you want. So for this I've just mixed some purple India ink to tint the resin because I want I still want some light to be able to pass through that. And then as you can see here, I've poured some of the acrylic diamonds onto a plate and then just using a stick I've just mixed it with a little bit of angel white paste in the resin um, which is from La Res and obviously there'll be some links for that in the description so I'm just making sure that these um, gems are well and truly coated with the resin so that we can build up the texture on the resin so if you just pour the stone straight onto the resin it'll sink down but if you do it this way you actually build up some texture you can see that you can add it is thick or as thin as you like so you can spread that about I'm only adding this to one edge because this is like going to be rolled over um, as you saw earlier to make the wave so I just need the the foam effect on one edge so just using a spoon I'm just going to spoon that all around on that um that on that edge there In addition to adding the white acrylic gems, I'm also just add I'm spooning some clear acrylic gems on top because I'm gonna have that coming creeping down further into the the wave. So um, so you've got more sparkle happening. So I'm I'm just drizzling that on top so that you've got the white and you've also got clear. And the clear gives you more of the water droplet look. Whereas the, when you do it with white, it gives it more of a sea foamy look. So the combination of the two makes for um, quite interesting look on that. As I mentioned earlier, I added some white to the backside. I didn't actually give it much thought that this was actually going to be turned over. So I needn't have bothered doing this. I could have just added white to the top half of the area that you'd see when it rolls over but this was um, a waste of time and then I ended up having to fix it when I rolled it over so although it looked nice on this side it was not necessary to do. Now this has been curing uh, for a few hours now and I often get asked how long you need to leave something curing and I generally don't say how long because Depending on where you are in the world, what resin you're using, uh, what temperature is in your room, it varies um, quite greatly from a couple of hours to five or six hours. So it's hard to say when, you know, how long you should leave your resin for. What I do like to say is that if you leave your resin until it's no longer sticky, so the when you touch it, you know it, you're not pulling any of the resin away and you can try that out by touching the stick that you use to mix your resin so if you can touch that and um, it's no longer sticky then you know that you're you can now move it <clears throat> excuse me so you know that's when you can see the best time to move it So obviously you need to do the, your own experimenting with the best times to move your, your resin because um, like I say I can't give you a specific time because it varies from different times of the year. So what I've done, is, so as you can see when I rolled that over you can see all this white um, this just ended up as blobs and I will fix that. But now using the cone that I showed you earlier that I wrapped with painter's tape I'm now using that to form the shape of the resin. And as you can see, because I used a freeform shape instead of a square shape, a rectangle shape rather, with the um, the pet mat, you can see I get a more natural look with the, the shape of the resin, so that works quite well. And I've just placed a ruler in there to stop the end from collapsing while it's um, 
cure in, in place. And then I'll just use um, the bottle of mineral turpentine to stop that from rolling back on itself. So if yours starts trying to open up, you can actually use sellotape to stick it um, on itself, but that seemed to work quite well. Um, and so it's the next day now, and I'm just removing the cellophane ready for um, the next layers of resin. As I haven't, uh, it's only been a few hours since this was cured, I don't need to sand the piece. If I'd left it for um, several hours, I would then have to sand the resin piece to give it a good um, tooth for the resin to bind to. So what I've done here is, uh, again, I've mixed some of the acrylic diamonds with a little bit of angel white paste mixed in with the resin and I'm just filling in the gaps of where the resin it rolled over and just to give it the look that it's it's uh, creating like sea foam when it's hit the water and obviously this is just an abstracty piece because it's purple it's not blue and everything like that it doesn't need to look perfect but I just feel that it just needed finishing off my last resin piece I felt needed that extra element doing so it's it was it will definitely be worth the effort to do this on your resin wave so like I mentioned earlier because I didn't like the white I've mixed up some more resin um, again in the blue India ink a little bit darker than the um, the wave itself just so that I can hide some of that white it will obviously still shine through because it's quite translucent but it still gives it a nice finish so that actually worked out quite well I was quite pleased with how that turned out and again using the heat gun to just zap any bubbles before um, applying the acrylic diamonds And again, I'm just spooning them on um, dry. There's no need to tint these or anything because I just want to give the impression of some bubbles and just add a little bit of extra sparkle to the piece because I, I feel that that just finishes it off a little bit. It just gives it a little bit more depth. And you know how I like things to sparkle and shine, so you know how I like to use these acrylic down. And so you can never have too many of these. So to finish the look I had a little bit of the white angel paste it mixed in the resin left so I'm just going to just put that apply that to the edge and just using a little bit of mineral turpentine to just help that flow a little bit easier when I apply the heat that just create uh, some lacing and cells and things. You don't have to do this but I actually do like to add a little bit of mineral turpentine. Now, the thing with mineral turpentine is that it evaporates and doesn't leave any residue on your uh, resin piece so that's why I like to use it as opposed to any other kind of additive. And then again just using the heat just moving that around a little bit to just give it a little bit of a, a foamy look. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody who's purchased my um, book, The Essential Beginner's Guide to Resin Art Techniques. The, for that, I'm very grateful. The book is doing really well on Amazon, and so I'm absolutely delighted with the results there, so thank you for that. As always, you'll find a list of the description, a list of the products used in the description. Um, so if you're looking for something in particular, please go on there and have a look. So if you like this video and would like to see more resin ideas then please subscribe to my channel or better still go and browse my other videos. I have plenty of videos to help inspire you. So until next time, see you in the next video. Bye for now.